Hello everyone, my name is Brad Mason, pioneer field agronomist for Western Illinois. We're finally getting heat and I'm standing in a crop that's actually pollinating and it's pretty exciting to see that because a lot of us felt like it was never going to happen. This corn crop was planted in that April 20th through the 26th time frame and for the most part in the area a lot of that corn is either peaking out tassels or has been tasseling for a week or so depending on the planting date. The biggest question I get when it comes to corn pollination is it seems like corn always pollinates in the hottest week of the year so people start worrying about pollen viability when it comes to heat. So I have a tassel in my hand and I want to talk through some of those things and what, what should be the concern when it comes to heat. So this tassel, when it pollinates, it's typically between 8 and 9 o'clock in the morning. And the reason why that is, is because you can see there are a few anthers actually hanging off of here. And what those anthers do is when we get a dew in the mornings or overnight, as it starts to dry out, these anthers that have moisture dry out and then they crack and they actually release the pollen and that's when we have that pollination window occur. So that's usually around eight to nine o'clock in the morning as that dew starts to come off and this moisture is removed. The reason why I'm not overly concerned about heat and pollen viability when it comes to temperature is because for pollen to not be viable, it has to be 104 degrees for that pollen to not be viable. So when we look at that, how often is it 104 degrees between eight and nine o'clock in the morning or even leading after that, you know, nine, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, we may get those temperatures in the late afternoon hours, but by that time the pollen has fallen, probably landed on silks and is well on its way to pollinating that kernel. So 104 degrees is the main thing that sticks out in my mind and it isn't absolutely a critical thing and does not really interfere with this pollination window. So I'm not overly concerned about the heat. I'm, I'm happy to see it. And one of the benefits from this heat wave we're getting is we're getting this added growth from some of that June corn, but also we get the added benefit of these cool nights. It's not typical we're getting these high 90s and then we're still dipping down in the 70s and even 60s overnight and that's really going to help this corn crop and the reason why that's going to help this corn crop is because as these ears start to develop those cool nights allow for this plant to slow down for a minute and really get that kernel set and that kernel growth down because we've had some of those nights in previous years where this corn crop never gets a chance to slow down and continues to develop and continues to develop and really runs through the reproductive stages really quickly so we can get that slower grain fill because of the fact that we have cooler nights, it's always an added benefit. The reason why I am concerned about nighttime temperatures though, is because this June crop still has a ways to go before we get to pollination. So as we start to look at that window, that may fall for grain fill in that August timeframe. So we all know that August is typically hot, but those evening temperatures are typically pretty warm too. I look for anything over 80 to 85 degrees at night being my low as a concern for this crop because again that canopy doesn't get a chance to slow down we may start seeing some aborted kernels because of that as that crop gets some more stress so I wanted to talk about the ear actually really quick because I wanted to check the pollination process on this ear currently so you can see there are some silks still attached and the way to check your pollination on the ears is to simply just pull an ear off very gently pull the husk off and shake until there are silks remaining or some have fallen off and you can see for the most part all my silks fell off besides at the base of the ear at the very very end of the year here it's very common what actually this corn pollinates in a very particular pattern the first five kernels are actually ignored that's why we see the base of this ear completely full of silks once we get to that fifth kernel that is where where pollination actually starts it will start with that fifth kernel and it will work its way up until we get to the very end of this ear and you see we have that case happening exactly there we're pollinated to about you know 90 percent of this year we just have the very ends remaining and those will eventually get filled here in the next couple days as we go through that so this is not a major concern but with that being said as i talked about those hot nights this is a concern when we talk about being fed because this ear feeds itself the exact same way it's pollinated the fifth kernel up is typically gets fed first and it works its way all the way to the top so if we have those hot nights in august or hot nights here in the next couple weeks 
we could start to see the top of this year not to get fed and that's why we see some of those crops in previous years where we start to have tip dieback and that that could be a concern for some of that June crop and even this crop if we do turn off hot. So I want to say that because I want to make sure we're focusing in on this crop and making sure we're, we're getting everything pollinated and taking a look to see what we really have out there. The other thing that we're currently looking at would be fungicide. We're at that VT R1 timing where a lot of people like to go out and spray. So I just make sure that when I'm out here looking at these fields, I'm really looking for how much pressure is there of a certain disease. We're starting to see a fair amount of gray leaf spot, fair amount of common rust. And the gray leaf spot's probably my bigger concern. And you know, gray leaf will, will start at the bottom of the leaf and work its way up. And really where I'm focused is I wanna know where's that gray leaf spot on this plant and how close it is right here to this ear leaf. Because here up is what feeds this plant and we need to make sure we protect that. You know, I'm holding an ear that I'm not 100% sure I would see ears of this size and as many as this is around for how stressful of an environment we went through in that V5 to V7 time frame. But so far the potential may quite may be there and we need to make sure we're doing our due diligence, scouting the right fields, making sure we're making the right decisions to protect what we currently have out there, specifically on this April, April crop. Thanks everybody for watching. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.